Greetings once more in the wonderful and precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We are glad for this yet another opportunity of sharing with us on the Word of God. We were talking about prayer and how the church which was not praying got James to be killed because they were not vigilant, they were not they were not concentrating, they were not taking up their mandate very seriously. And at the end, they ended up losing one of their own brethren. And we saw that the kingdom of darkness is so much happy when children of God are not praying because they attack at that particular time. Our vigilance is very important as the people of God. But as soon as Herod saw that it pleased him, it pleased the Jews for him to kill uh, James. Then all of a sudden he went after Peter and they arrested Peter. They put him in. But at that time they began to pray. You can read that in the book of Acts chapter 12. They began to pray. The Bible says it very plain that prayers were made continually for Peter while he was still in prison. He was still arrested at that time. And all of a sudden God sent his angel to come and set him free and he was delivered. And so many miracles happened there because the angel of the Lord came and took him from the midst of the two soldiers who were tied to him. And again, the doors began to open on their own because God was ready to deliver his person. And even with you, God is ready to deliver you. Now, I'm continuing on the same that the Bible expects of us to pray, but not just to pray anyhow. Not just to pray. You know when you say people must pray, people will go and say, no, the Bible says, uh, uh, Jesus Christ said we must pray the Lord's Prayer. And they pray the Lord's Prayer. And many a times when things are not going right, they say, but I prayed. You see, there is a chance that you may pray amiss. The Bible says so in the book of James chapter 4 verse 3. It, verse 3, it says, some of us we pray and we pray amiss. That's why our prayers were not answered. So people will pray the Lord's prayer, but the Lord's prayer doesn't help you when you are in demonic possession or when you are attacked by demonic forces. It doesn't help you. But even that, Jesus Christ never said pray like this. He said in this manner, he was giving a pattern of prayer. How should prayer be offered? He was not saying every time when you are in trouble, you should pray the Lord's Prayer. Now, that is one other thing. But today, I want to talk to you that the Bible says prayers were continually offered for Peter. It means the people of God were ready to pray persistently, incessantly, and continuously for Peter. And when they prayed, God did his own miracles. And God is saying to us, we must call unto him and he will answer us and show us great and mighty things. That is prayer. When you pray to God, God hears and God answers. Jesus Christ told us that we must pray to the Father in the name of Jesus. And whatever we shall ask the Father in the name of Jesus, he will do it for us. Let us uh, realize that Jesus Christ himself, even when he was at the at the, at the grave of Lazarus, he began to pray. And the way he prayed in raising Lazarus from the dead, it shows us he was a person who was in contact, constant contact with the Almighty God. Because he prayed, said, Father, I thank you that you heard me. And I thank you that you always hear me. So Jesus Christ had it settled in his heart that every time he prays, God hears him. But this is a problem of many Christians. They think that God doesn't hear. They think that they are praying to a God who is deaf. They think that they are praying to a God who cannot act. The Bible says, call unto me and I will answer you and show you. God says, I will show you. It means there's tangibility in the answer of the Almighty God. Now, we need to continue in prayer. But we must pray in a way that is pleasing to God. This is what I want to talk about today. Praying the will of God. In the book of 1 John chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5. We read there something that is very important from verse 11. Verse 11 says, And this is the record that God has given to us eternal life. That is settled. God has given to us eternal life. And this life is in his son, Jesus Christ. So it means when you are without Jesus Christ, you don't have this life. You don't have the eternal life. You don't have the zoe life. You don't have the life that is very powerful in transforming and changing things in your life. And he that has 
the son has the life and he that doesn't have the son doesn't have life the bible says that but verse 13 these things have i written unto you that believe on the name of the son of god so it is very important for you to believe in the name of the son of god before you can pray make sure that you have a good relationship with the almighty god that's why jesus christ says when you pray say abba father it means you must have a father son a father daughter relationship with god and then he says Therefore, these things I have written to you that believe on the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life. You mustn't just wish. You mustn't just think. You mustn't. You must have a certainty that you are. You are the Son of God. You must have a certainty that you have the eternal life. That is the thing that says the relationship that you have with God will ensure that when you pray, God hears your prayers. He says that you may know that you have the life and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. Many people are saying to us that we can believe in any other way. We can come through any other name. The Bible says there's no salvation except in the name of Jesus. You cannot come in any other name except the name of Jesus Christ. So it is when you come in the name of Jesus Christ, it is when you believe in the Son of God, when you believe in Jesus Christ, that you will begin to have a relationship with God. All other religions are attempting to have a relationship with God. But Christianity certain gives us for a certain that we have this relation with this, with the Almighty God. Now, verse 14, which is what I wanted to talk about. It says, and this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, we know that whatsoever we ask, we know that we will have the petitions that we desire of him. Now, here there are certain certainties that are guaranteed in the word of God. Number one, it says this is the confidence. We are confident of this. You will have confidence when you understand these things. It says this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we pray, we ask anything according to his will. Now many people go on and say, oh God, if it is your will. Oh God, when it is your will. Or the will of God is greater. But they don't understand what is the will of God. All of us understand that when your father or your mother dies, at the court they will ask for the will. And when they see the will written, it means that will goes. It means this is the wish of this person. Even with us, God has given us his word. God has given us the Bible as the will of God. The will of God is contained in the Bible. No other book but the Bible. No other book gives this certainty. No other scripture gives the certainty. No other word gives the certainty except the scripture of the word of God. It says, this is the confidence that we have in. If we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. That is why Jesus Christ, when he stood at the tomb of Lazarus, he said, Father, I thank you that you hear me. He had some certainty. And the Bible says we can have the same certainty that God hears us. And verse 15 says, if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desire of him. So when you ask according to the will of God, when you ask according to the word of God, when you ask knowing the will of God, the will of God is contained in this word. When you know the will of God, when you know the word of God, then you can be able to ask knowing that God is going to hear you and God is going to answer you. Here's another thing and a good example for that matter. When somebody is arrested and is taken to court, the lawyer comes and he comes with the constitution he comes with the laws of the country he defends based on the laws of the country he depends based on what is written jesus christ himself when he was fighting with the devil in the book of luke chapter 4 and all uh, is also repeated in the book of Matthew chapter 4 jesus christ kept on saying it is written it means in the court or in the law or in the battle with the enemy jesus christ came on with what was written he began to quote what is in the scripture because it is the will of god he began to talk to them on the basis of the will of god he began to 
talk and attack the devil and stand against him on the strength and on the authority of the word of God, of the will of God, if I may say. So the Bible says, when we know the will of God, when we know what God wants of our life, you know some people, they go to God when they are sick, they don't even know whether it is the will of God to heal them or not. But here's another stupidity. People go and they say, no, maybe God is giving me this sickness in order to teach me something. I usually respond to the people who say that, that are you so stubborn that you cannot learn from the word of God. You can only learn when something bad happens to you. Another thing, if it is the will of God, why do you go to the hospital, to a doctor, to go and take away the will of God? We know that it is not the will of God for us to be sick. That's why when you are sick, you don't sit there and praise the Lord and thank God that God, I thank you for this sickness or this cancer or this tuberculosis and so you go to the hospital to make sure that and you go to people who will pray for you so that they can pray even people on the call you call people and say please pray for me because you know it is not the will of God for you to be sick the Bible says by the stripes of Jesus Christ we are healed the Bible says our God is a God who heals us our God is a God who takes away disease from the middle that is the will of God for you to can be healed for you to can be delivered so when you pray asking God to heal you you are asking him a According to his will, you are asking him in line with his will. You are asking him in conjunction with his will. And because you are asking based on the will of God, God is going to answer you. God is going to show you great and mighty things. Hallelujah. Here's another thing. The Bible says, if we know that he hears us, then we have whatever that we have asked of him. If we know that God hears us, that's where the problem is. People don't know that God hears them. People don't believe that God hears them. People don't think that God hears them. That's why some people have given, given up on praying. Some people have even given up on going to church in their Christianity. Let me tell you something. Come back to God because only God has an answer for you. The Bible says if we pray according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, then we know that we already have the petitions that we ask of him. Another thing about prayer, the Bible encourages us to continue in prayer. I'm going to go to the book of Colossians. Colossians chapter 4. The book of Colossians chapter 4 verse 2. The Bible tells us there that we need to continue in prayer. Not just to pray, but to continue. Colossians chapter 4 verse 2. Here is what the Bible says. Colossians chapter 4 verse 2. It says, continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving continue in prayer watch in the same with thanksgiving prayer must be offered also with thanksgiving just like we used to do when we were still at school they taught us that when you apply for a job and then at the end you say uh, thanking you in anticipation so you give thanks for something that has not yet been done you give thanks for something that has not yet been given but the Bible says here, we must thank, we must continue in prayer. The Bible says, and watching in the same with thanksgiving. It means you keep your watch with thanksgiving. You don't keep your watch with doubt. You don't keep your watch with fear. You keep watching by thanking God. Ah, the Bible in the book of uh, 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 Acts. Romans chapter 4, the Bible gives us an example of Abraham. It says Abraham was strong in faith, giving glory to God or giving thanks unto the Almighty God. The Bible in the book of Philippians chapter 4 verse 6, it says do not worry about anything but in prayer and supplication with thanksgiving make your request known unto God. Don't worry about your problems but instead Give your prayer unto God with thanksgiving. It means prayer with thanksgiving is going to achieve great things. The Bible in the book of Acts chapter 16, it says Paul and Silas were praying and they were praising God and were giving thanks. So it means when you have prayed, you've got to give thanks because giving thanks is a sign of faith. 
giving thanks is a sign of saying whatever I've prayed for, it has been given. When you continue in prayer, you continue also in praise. When you continue in prayer, you continue also in thanksgiving. And when you do that, it shows that you understand the will of God. You understand that whatever you have asked from God, it is within his will. Now, Colossians chapter 4 verse 12 tells us something that Paul was praying was praying for epaphras was praying for verse 12 epaphras who is one of you a servant of christ salutes you always laboring fervently for you in prayers always laboring favor fervently for you in prayers and the bible shows us here what is it that he was praying he says that you may stand perfect and complete in all the will of god so we see here that this man understood the will of god he was praying for them according to the will of god he was praying for them in line with the will of god he was praying for them within the will of god he was praying with them understanding what god wants for them so when I pray for you and pray in understanding that God wants you healed, God wants you delivered, God wants you to be set free, God is a God of dead cancellation, God is a God who supplies our needs according to his riches. When I pray in that understanding, I'm praying for you to stand complete and perfect in all the will of God. I like it the way they put it. <coughs> They say they he was always laboring fervently for you in prayer. Praying for what? That you may stand perfect. God wants perfection in your life. Yeah, I know that many people will say nobody has reached perfection. Nobody can achieve perfection. But yeah, the Bible says this man was praying for the church that they will stand complete and perfect in all the will of God. God wants you to be perfect. God wants you to be complete in the will of God, not in any other thing. And remember that the wills can be many wills. Some people who are devilish can wish for something or can will for something that is not right for your life. Some people want you to be bound just like Herod. The Bible says it pleased the Jews for him to arrest the church and to kill them. It pleased them. There are people who are very happy when you suffer all kinds of terrible things. There are people who are excited when you go through trouble. But the Bible tells us here that you can stand complete and perfect in all the will of God so we need to learn to pray for ourselves and pray the will of God over our life we can pray that we be healed we can pray that we be delivered we can pray that we have salvation we can pray that God will be able to change our life I remember one time we were praying in Botswana praying for somebody to be saved you know this person was wayward this person was out of the way this person they were complaining so much about ah, and this person has been taken for counseling has been taken everywhere else for help but nothing could help this person was arrested at one time and he was taken out of prison when he was out of prison they said we must pray because they understood that if we can pray God is going to do something we prayed for this person continued in prayer we continued to pray because the Bible says it it is the will of God that all men should be saved and that they should come to the knowledge of the truth of the word of God. We prayed for them until one day they came to church and they were sitting at the back. But when I was about to close in our prayer, that person jumped up and screamed and said, I want to get saved in Sichuan. It was in Butuan. I want to get saved. So it means prayer was able to hold her. The power of prayer was able to change her. The power of prayer was able to stop whatever it is that the enemy wanted to do about her life. There is power in the people of God when they pray. Just like they prayed and they set Peter free. Just like we prayed and prayed for these people, for this girl to get saved. And finally, she received her salvation. And our was told this was years ago in the 90s i was told that even now she is a preacher of the word of god because prayer works 
Prayer is able to change situations around. Prayer is able to change communities around. Prayer is able to change whatever is not going right in your life. If you can pray and believe God and pray the will of God over your life, over your family, over your circumstances, over your, over your business. There are some people who need to start praying for their businesses so that they could be changed in their businesses. Go to God about it. God cannot give you an idea about your business and leave you alone to yourself. But you can go to God as you pray for your business. Your business shall be changed. It shall be shaped in accordance with the will of God. I like what my wife says. She says prayer is like igniting fire in a forest. When you pray, you are igniting fire into the forest. And then she says, when the fire begins to burn, all sorts of snakes and everything, they come out running. All sorts of demons and demonic forces and forces of the devil, they will come out living. Send the fire of God by prayer into your circumstance, into your situation, into your family, even your children who are wayward. Begin to call on the name of the Lord. Begin to call on their name before the Almighty God. Begin to stand in the gap for them. The Bible says when we stand in the gap, we shall be able to see. I said it again. First Timothy chapter 2. The Bible says it is the will of God. That we should pray. It pleases God that we should pray. And the Bible says we will live a quiet and a peaceable life when we pray. So your prayers, oh my God, can bring about a change. Your prayers can bring about a change in your church, pastor. Your prayers can bring about a change in your home, man of God. I remember there's another man of God, Joe Peters. He says he was busy counseling another couple. I mean, the wife was very terrible. But the wife did not even understand what was happening. And he says they began to pray. He told the man, let us fast and pray. I remember again in the book of Esther, they fasted and prayed and they changed the decree of Naaman. Oh my God. It doesn't matter what the devil has decreed about your life. When you pray, it can change and you will be able to change. We can change countries. We can change communities. We can change homes. We can change systems only by the power of prayer. So this person began to pray and he prayed and all of a sudden he called him he said come I have a word from the Lord for you He went and he says you know God told me that next time when you come home Your wife begin to talk and do whatever she does all the time God says you need for you to take a tumble on top of the coffee table This man looked at him and said ah, Is that all that you can say to me? That when my wife does all those things, I should just take a temple. He says, yes, this is what God told me. Then he went back home. He says the wife started making noise and making noise. He looked at the coffee table. He looked at his child. He looked at the wife. And he thought to himself, ah, I'm not doing that. But then again, the wife kept on going. And then he began to look at the coffee table. Look at the children. Because he's been telling his children not to jump on the coffee table. He thought to himself, what am I going to do? What are they going to say? But all of a sudden, as the wife was, he says, anyway, I've got nothing to lose. This marriage is over. This marriage, there's nothing that can be able to turn it around. He says, when the wife was gone, he went on his head onto the coffee table with his legs up. And all of a sudden, the, life, the wife began to break down and cry. And he says, he came down and the wife says, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But I'm saying to you, the situation was created by prayer. And today, those people are now married again. They renewed their vows and they are living a good life. But it took prayer to change the situation around. It took them going before the Almighty God, holding on to the arms of the altar and praying for their family. God wants people to pray. Again, in Luke chapter 18, the Bible tells us of a certain woman. But first, Jesus Christ says this. He says, he spoke to them a parable unto this end. That men ought always to pray and not to faint, not to give up. Don't give in. Some of you things, it seems as if they get worse when you pray. Yes, keep on praying because that's a kick of a dying horse. 
It's a kick of a dying horse. When the devil tries to live, when you want the devil to live, he will always try to fight back and to try and discourage you and to try and to stop them. But keep praying keep praying until the devil leaves the bible says submit yourself therefore unto god it means by submitting to god you do what god wants you to do you pray mister you pray mama you pray young man you pray for your family and you pray for your parents and you pray for your children and when you do that you submit unto god the bible says resist the devil oh my god the power of prayer is a power of resistance against the evil forces and resist the devil he will flee not you but the devil will flee take the devil out of your house take the devil out of your business take the devil out of your consent when you pray the almighty god looks down from heaven and makes sure that it happens when you pray god is able to open the heavens and begin to send these angels and they will come for your rescue when you pray for your family when you pray for your business when you pray for your community when you pray for things that are around you god is able to answer let me give you another example there was a time in soweto when people were being they said they were neglecting people they were putting a tire and bend them up we as a church in grace bible church began to pray and when we prayed and continued praying the tiring of people or neglecting of people or burning of people stop the church when is in prayer things happen good things happen God hears from heaven. God shakes things just like he did to shaking up the prison where Paul and Silas were in. God will shake the foundations of the problems that are coming up against you. As you pray, God will be in charge. God will come in line. God will come for your rescue and God will set you free. Prayer works. The Bible says, he spoke a parable in this way, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Then he gave an example of an unrighteous judge. This unrighteous judge, because the woman kept on coming, the widow kept on coming, continuing in prayer, continuing in requesting, continuing in asking. The Bible says ultimately the judge decided, the judge who never feared God, who did not count anybody, who did not respect anybody, that judge began to give up. Let me tell you something. The devil will give up on you as you continue to pray. I'm here to pray together with you. We have in there, down there, we have our telephone our telephone our telephone and we have our whatsapp message we have also our facebook note we also have this app download the app so that you can be able to get more of these messages that will be able to encourage you we want to pray for you we want to pray with you we want to make sure that we call on heaven to come on your assistance and let me tell you something god is able to do that let me pray with you father god in the name of jesus i ask you lord that the power of the almighty god the power to save the power to deliver the power to heal the power to do great and mighty things will be released upon your people, upon your children right now in the name of Jesus. We know, Father God, there's nothing too difficult from, for our God. There is nothing too heavy for our God. He's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask and think in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, that it is done in Jesus' name. Amen. Like I said to you, call us on those lines, download the app, Contact us on our Facebook page. Contact us on those telephone numbers so that we can be able to share more of the goodness of God with you and so that we can be able to pray together with you. And may God richly bless you. Amen. <music>